lot of work going on, a lot of effort going on through the years trying to connect El Nino, La Nina with hurricanes or lack thereof. You know, hurricanes infrequently, sometimes they do, but infrequently affect Oklahoma and appear to be less likely with an El Nino. With an El Nino, the upper level winds across the Caribbean, the Gulf of Mexico, on to, to Africa usually are too strong to allow significant hurricanes. I said usually. These strong winds create strong wind shear. In this case, stronger wind speeds aloft with somewhat weak winds near the surface basically stunt the growth of a tropical system. With warm waters off the west coast of Mexico and lighter winds aloft, hurricanes are likely in an El Nino, very likely. This also helps bring the moisture to our west coast, but just off the west coast being favorable for hurricanes, we just had Hurricane Patricia and uh, low pressure extreme low pressure. They'll probably refine that somewhat. The winds were expected to be near 200 miles an hour. That's a classic hurricane, classic outflow from the storm. The dark area in the middle there is the center of the hurricane and it was very, very small, but they still got into it, able to measure it. And a lot of that moisture came in up into the United States, affected Oklahoma a little bit, but mainly Texas and to the south. So sometimes an El Nino is going to be favorable for hurricanes. Sometimes they'll be on the west coast, occasionally in the Caribbean or the Atlantic, but Normally not. What is the relationship between El Nino and tornadoes? Well, with a southern jet stream, the El Nino jet stream, usually across the southern section of the United States for a good part of the time, then that area would be seen to be the most area likely for such storms. Texas on into the southeastern part of the country, but you know, it's never for sure. All you need are the proper conditions for a short time, and you can have tornadoes. Some fascinating information for you right here. During the El Nino fall of 1997, remember that's going into that 1997, 1998, very strong El Nino. Well, during that fall, we had just four tornadoes. All little, tiny, didn't do very much. That, that time frame back then would correspond to the fall of 2015, if we were actually able to compare apples to apples, but really it's difficult to do that. During El Nino January and February of 1998, we moved from the fall, into that winter period, zero tornadoes. Sometimes you get them in January and February. However, starting March 30th, 1998, you know, we had the big El Nino. We're going into November 29th, 1998, 80, write it down, 83 tornadoes struck Oklahoma. 19 tornadoes were recorded in central Oklahoma. During the spring of 98, what was happening, the El Nino was rapidly decreasing. It was above normal temperatures, uh, anomalies in the Pacific Ocean were diving toward what we call a La Nina. The La Nina lasted until early spring of 2001. Dare I mention that during the horrific May 3rd, 1999 tornado outbreak, we were in a La Nina. So the big question is, will the El Nino spring of 2016 be similar to the El Nino spring of 1998? If it is, we're in trouble. In reality, we will not know until it happens, or at least it gets a little bit closer. However, if we plunge toward a significant La Nina, going from the El Nino to La Nina, like it happened in 1998, then the past may well repeat itself.